Alright, what up? It's your boy Face from Flight School TV, and I'm down here with my man's FBCC from the Bay Area. If y'all don't know, you should know. What he doing in what he doing in Oakland right now is pretty epic, in my Thank opinion. You. Now, appreciate it. Like before we get into the the product and what you actually doing. Yeah. I wanna like let's 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 get a background story to who you are. Okay. As right. a, as the owner of FBCC. All right, so uh, uh, FBCC stands for Flyboys Couture Club. My Say that name, one more time. It stands for Flyboys Couture Club. Mm. All right, and I started it back in 2011, just doing little t-shirts. You know, I just wanted the um, I just wanted you know wear my own t-shirts, and I just like the saying you know Flyboys Couture Club because a lot of people don't know Couture means cut and sew. So like a lot of the stuff that I that's here, I make it myself. Mm. So, but my background it starts. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, the only reason why I'm in the Bay Area, I was in the United States Coast Guard. I did 11 years in the Coast Guard, um, but after you know my 11th year, you know in the military, you move a lot, and I just got tired of moving. But with that, mm -hmm. you gotta by you moving so much, mm -hmm. you took in a lot of different cultures. Definitely. So uh, and what they was doing, maybe what they was doing overseas, and right. you might have brought some of that back. Right. So just the knowledge of different cultures. Yeah. So uh, so basically, when I moved out here to Oakland, I moved out here in two thousand and three. One thing that I liked back then, it was no Facebook, it was no Instagram yet. So people were still authentic in who they were, mm. which I liked. So when I moved over here, like the guys out here was wearing uh, Jabot jeans. Yeah. New York, we had been stopped yeah, wearing Jabot yeah, jeans. Yeah, yeah. You know, now the way people dress here, you go to LA, you go to New York, everybody's dressing the same. Because the social media. Because social media opened it up. Like, so it's, uh, it's not, a, you don't see it that much anymore where people are authentic to their environment. All right, so going back to your story, you you bounced around because you was in the Navy? No, I was in the Coast Guard. You was in the Coast Guard. Yeah. So you was bouncing around place to place. Yeah. And then how did you end up settling in the Bay Area, okay. Oakland? Right, so like I said, I, uh, when I joined the Coast Guard, 2003, they brought me out here. At first, I didn't like it because it was just a lot different from New York. It's my first time living away from home. But then I started like getting to meet the people and getting to really the locals, not the military people, like the people who's from the town. And I was like, man, these people are, are super cool. And then not only that, Oakland is a lot like Brooklyn. It's like a West Coast version of New York. So I started ingratiating myself in the actual local culture. So with that, um, because I was in the military, I got moved again. Then I moved to Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So I was stationed at Pascagoula, Mississippi, right before Katrina hit. And then down there was different because Pascagoula, Mississippi is more of a military town. So I was meeting people from Chicago, from Texas, from, and then those people would bring their own flavors. Right, right. See, here is not really, the Bay Area is not really a military town because all we have now here is the Coast Guard. But in Mississippi, I had the Navy. I was stationed on a Navy right. base. So I had the Navy where I met dudes from Tennessee. And you just see the different style, the way their cars was. They had like dunks. That's what they called them. Like, I ain't never knew what that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I meet people from like Chicago and how they were telling me like Chicago's like, they call itself the second city. But then you, I got to see like just the independence and just the kind of like the swag of people from different places. Now, when you're in New York, pretty much it's people from different places like Puerto Rico or Europe, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like in the military, I got to meet people from different states. Right. So right, I got right, to meet right. that. People from down south compared right. to people up north. Exactly. And compared to people in the Midwest. And then still being that it's still the early 2000s, people are still having their own authentic style right, right. from where they're from. And back, like Joe. Like people are like, yo, what up, Joe? Yeah. And I'm like, that's my name's we, not Joe, yeah, but that's, that's a Chicago we, yeah, thing. That, that's what we say. We say that all the time in Chicago. Hey, Joe, check it out. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. So I was like, well, Joe, why do you keep saying Joe? It's like it's like New York saying son. Yeah. You know so what at what point in time did did you like um, realize that you had uh, like the like like a drive to okay. be in the fashion industry? Period. Right. Big part of the story that was missed that I just flew over one. I'm the youngest out of six kids, right? 
I'm my mom's baby boy. I got, I had three brothers, but one passed. So I got one brother and I got three sisters. My mom was a seamstress. Every day she would come, come home from work and make her own clothes to wear the next day. She ain't like wearing the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. Like, so, but none of my sisters had that talent that my mom has. I didn't even know I had it. You know, I never wanted to sew because when I was younger, it was like, oh, if you sew, that's something oh, girls yeah, do. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, start yeah. thinking in your head like... Back then, it was stereotype. It was stereotype like, oh, that's something that females do. Right, right, right. So, um, so, but in ni 1997 is when I graduated high school and I went to Queensboro Community College. I met this dude named Drew Cartier. He used to work for uh, uh, DJ Clue and DJ Envy. And he had painted his Jordan 13s. It was the red and white ones. He had painted uh, the bottom uh, elephant feet part blue. And the Olympics was that year, and I was like, yo, those are fire, where'd you buy those? He said, I painted them. So I was like, you painted them? What paint did you use? And he had told me the paint he used, so then I started painting my shoes. He only painted that one shoe, he just wanted to do it one right, time. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I got hooked on it, so I started buying all the Jordans, because I didn't wear like Air Force ones, I only wore Jordans. So right. I started painting all the Jordans, and people would be like, yo, where you got those Jordans from? And my sister at the time was in the army, and I was like, yeah, my sister, she got them in the army in Germany. This is what they look like out there. So I wouldn't tell nobody I was painting them. Yeah. I just wanted to have this joint yeah, nobody yeah, had. Yeah, yeah. So from that, it grew, and then in 2001, other people caught up. They started painting the Jordans, and now, I'm not the best drawer. I can't draw portraits. People started painting portraits on it. I was like, I can't compete with that. Yeah, what right. could I do right. to up my game to compete with them? I said, I'm gonna start taking the shoes apart and putting the fabric on it, and you know, so that's that's okay. when that's when it started, and then out of back, competition, out of competition to stay to stay relevant. to stay different and stay relevant. So in New York, in New York, I used to go to uh, Chinatown, uh, uh, Canal Street, and buy the fake Gucci trench coats like this and cut them up, and that's when I used to do the Gucci Air Force Ones. So I was doing Little Kim, Foxy yeah, Brown, Cormega. If you look at Cormega's video called "Get Out My Way," you'll see. Me in the video, but you'll see him wearing the Gucci Air Force Ones, the Gucci Tims, all of that. So I was so doing your, that. Your history go back. To yeah. That, that far. It back go back to 97. And then I was doing, like, I did Jada Kiss Knock Yourself Out video, the Air Force Ones. He had on with the Gucci check. See, that's that's something that's very important because people will see your success right now. Right. And be like, oh, he just started popping. That's what they think. But they don't understand that. It's been 10 years plus. And not only that. Yes, and longer than that, and you've been putting in work. Right, but not only that. See, that that's the other thing that they don't understand. So, now mind you, I'm telling you, I'm doing all this. I'm doing Jada Kid shoes. I'm doing Cormac. I'm doing all these people's shoes. And at the time, I had accumulated enough money to own my own barbershop because I was a barber by trade. So, I had my own barbershop, but then 9-11 happened. And business slowed down. Um, and then there was no internet. So, even customizing slow down like right, and you I wasn't getting right. custom orders no more so then I was like you know what I turned 25 and I always made this promise with my sister who was in the army I said if I turn 25 and I don't make make it rich doing what I was doing then I would join the military but you know and like you said like a lot of people think that you just everything just happened and you're successful at once I, I could have been a millionaire right now I don't know if y'all remember Y'all seen the jean suits where they had um, all the NBA teams on it? Yeah. Don I C, did that first. Don C kind of brought that back. Right. That, that. I started that in 1997. Putting the, low, the, the, the logo Dude, on it. Dude, I used to go to this store, and people who are from New York listening, it's called Cosby Sports, and it's in Mass Square Garden. It's in the garden, and they used to sell pennants. You know, like where your team won a pennant, yeah, you yeah, had yeah. the pennants. They used to sell pennants, and they used to have some of the patches. But whatever team they didn't have the patches for, I would buy the pennants and cut the logo out. And I was stitching it on my jean suits, right? And I never knew back then that I could have trademarked and copyrighted that idea. I thought because I was using NBA logos and teams that I couldn't do that. And then about, I was 19 at the time. About three years later, a company called Unk, UNK, came out with the jean suits that had all of the teams on it. And I, now mind you, I used to wear this all around Manhattan, yeah, you all around the doing. garment district, because I was still doing my Jordans and I was wearing it with it because it was like, yo, you trying yeah. to compete with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Because Times Square in New York, that's where all the young cats used to go and get fresh and be like, yo, what you got? I had the fly Jordans and then I had the jean suits with everything on it, not knowing that if I had copyrighted that idea, I would have been a millionaire at 19. Yeah, because that, that like like I said, Don C just starting to bring that back. Yeah. But, like that's that's a that's a historical fact right there that you know what I'm saying like you 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 said that you like is it you got you got pictures and all that stuff? Yes, I yo, I have a picture with me and, and Earl Frazier from the Knicks. I had okay back then, remember uh uh Jeff Hamilton used to make the the coats that had all the NBA teams on it, right? Yeah. So I was like, I don't want that. I want a coat 
a white coat at that. They wasn't making a white leather jacket. So I made a white leather jacket and then I made all of the ABA. I, I researched the ABA. I made all of their logos by hand. I brought all the leather and every color. They, if they joined was red, I brought the red leather, cut it out. Into the, I would go to uh, Kinko's back then and photocopy, the, print out the, the logo five times. If it had five colors, I would print it out five times and each layer I would put it on and cut it out by hand. So I made this jacket by hand of all of the ABA teams and even on the back when you lift the collar it said ABA. Even the letters, everything, I made all of that by hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See, and it's you, crazy. If I knew what I knew now, that right. then, oh right. man. See, but that's 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 a problem in a lot of communities right now, just lack of knowledge because there's so many creative people that just don't know they lack the knowledge to get they to reach their potential. Exactly. And that's going on a lot. And hopefully with this platform that I'm creating, we spread right. that knowledge. And, and that's another thing though, is that people now, they want to hand it to them. Like all of it, now mind you, all the stuff I'm telling you, nope, there was no YouTube to see a tutorial on how to make this or how to do that. I said I want it, I had to figure it out right. on my own. Right. Now people be like, okay, you make your own shoes. What factory are you using? How you do this? How you do this? They want you to give them every all your hard right, work. Right, right. But they don't understand that it took you years to figure this out. Exactly. And it took you years of work and dedication. And exactly. that's why you that's why you reached the level of success that you at and you're gonna continue to grow. Exactly. But as we sitting here talking, the one thing that's going through my mind is like how like how was your like what was your childhood like? Because you gotta okay. drive right. that's that's hungry. And a lot of people that's what separate that's that's what thin the herd. Right, right. Because you got some people that's aggressive. Like like you like yeah. everything you saying, it's a, it's aggressive. It's passion. Like you, it's it's passion. Yeah. It's, it's relentless. So like, where did that come from? Like how was your childhood? Uh, right. A lot of a lot right. of that relentlessness come from people childhood and circumstances where they was like, man, I gotta get out this situation or yeah. I got I gotta make it. I gotta make it. It ain't no ifs ands or buts. Right. I gotta make it. Facts. So my childhood. All right. So I'm the youngest out of six. Uh, I have a different dad from all my siblings. So my uh, my sisters and my brother, their sibling was married. Uh, you know, my siblings, their, their dad was married to my mom. My mom separated from their, from their dad, her husband, and then had me. But the thing was, so most of my life, it's just been me and my mom. Because my, my oldest sisters, and I'm the youngest by eight years. So my the next closest yeah. to me is eight years older and then 10 years older. And then I have my older sister, older brother, uh, old enough to be my parents. Yeah. So um, so they lived with their dad most of the time. I only remember briefly of stints of them living with us. So it was pretty much me and my mom. So my mom pretty much had to raise myself. My mom worked. I remember my mom working three jobs. Like my mom would sleep on the train to her next job to get her rest because she would literally work three jobs. She's a she's super smart, so she was an accountant. Uh, she used to work in the Trump Tower for, uh, I don't know who it was, but somebody who was making money, she was their private accountant. Then she worked in the hospital. So all of this time while she's doing this, me at seven years old, basically I would heat my own food up that she would leave, do my homework, eat my food, take myself Teach to school, so know the whole teaching, day. But not knowing that you developing the exactly. skill to As a teach seven year yourself. Old. How to do things, yeah. and to do things on your own. Not things knowing. I couldn't imagine as a parent now having my child be home by himself pretty much. Right. Like I would wake up and take care of myself at seven years old, right. walk to school, no cell phones, nothing. You like, pack your own lunch, yeah, you get your all, own all of that. And get out. So I think it started from that. And then it used to be like, and I was kind of spoiled though. Like it, it's, I was a spoiled ride, right? but like I didn't want for nothing. My mom never was on welfare. She worked hard for what she wanted. But at the same time, whatever I wanted, I was like, Ma, I want to get some shoes. She was like, well, you need to go to the supermarket, pack some bags, and then use that money to save it up and buy your shoes. So she wouldn't just hand me stuff. She would tell me how to make money. Like, you can go to the supermarket, you know? And then at the time, I was making more money than the people making minimum wage on the register because I'd be outside helping the old ladies. Like, hey, can I help you to your car? I always have manners. And they'd be like, oh, and they'd give me a little $10 tip. Like, you're so cute, yeah. so handsome, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's how I went. So I never begged. I had to always learn how to make the money, yeah, yeah. you know? So I think a lot of everything with me comes from my mom. Yeah, see, that's, that's the part that a lot of people don't realize. Like, some people sit back and be like, man, how is... How is he successful? How like how is that working? Right. But they don't understand that circumstances from early on gave you a drive exactly. that somebody else don't have. Somebody else like like hard work beat talent when talent don't work, work. hard. <laughs> I like but, that. But what 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 you got going? You got you got a mixture of both. 
Yeah, and, and, and that's a winning. That's a women formula. No matter what, no which way you slice it. And, and then it's that def, like so me being the youngest, like none of my other siblings finished high school and none of that. And I'm like, you know, my, I'm always with my mom. I'm like, you know what? I have to be the one that makes her proud. You know, not to say that she's not proud of my other siblings because they all have good jobs now. But at the same time, it's like I want to graduate high school. I want to go to college. Make so I'm a college in that way. Right. So I'm a high school graduate. I went to college first time. I did, it, it wasn't for me. Went to the military, got out the military, and then finished with honors, you know, college. Now, now I'm a college graduate from a fashion institute. But at the same is time, that way, real, real quick, is that why you incorporated that into your old company? Because I noticed that you do the Valley Victorian. Yes, is that's that exactly why. Because, okay. you know, like I said, I went to college before and it wasn't for me. So now, after doing 11 years in the military and then going back to college as a dad, I'm like, you know what? I don't just want to go to college. I want to actually succeed and be and, and be on the road the whole time. I'm there. I had a 3.8 GPA while running my own company and taking care of my children. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot. But That's it was something lot. that I promised my daughter that passed away when I went to a grave site. I told her, I said, daddy's going to get out of the military. And I was scared. You know, you, you, you think about leaving something that's so comfortable. Like the military, they take care of everything for you. You know, and every 1st and 15th, you pay. You know what I'm saying? Your rent is paid. Everything's taken care of. But so this late in life saying, you know what, I'm going to give up this career. I only needed two more tours, two more times to move. And I'm, I'm guaranteed a paycheck. The military yeah, will pretty yeah, much take yeah. care of me for the rest of my life. But I said, you know what, I do have this talent and it's burning inside me again. So, you know, one day I just went to my daughter's grave and I was like, you know what, daddy's going to do this. I'm going to take this chance. Scared as hell. I'm not from Oakland. You know, I'm getting out of the military with nobody. If I fail, if I have one, one, one thing goes wrong, right. I could be homeless. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one thing that drives me now. It's like I always, as a kid, had a fear of failure. Yeah. Like, and I think that's the sad part about our youth now. I don't think that they're scared to fail. Like, they get tattoos on their forehead, on their hands, and I'm like, as a person of color. That's already a roadblock, and, and, right. and it shouldn't be that way, but right. it's a fact. No, like, a fact. you're black, that's a mark against you in, in corp. Somebody may hire yeah, a white it's, person. It's, it's hard enough. It's hard enough to be black. I don't want to make it even that much harder. Yeah. So even though I was in the military, I have tats, but you can't see none of my tats while I'm right. cold. Right. You know, so I never wanted to get tats on my hand, my neck, my forehead. And I'm like, these kids are doing that now. And I'm like, what do you think you're going to work at? You know, yeah, next? But it comes from lack of guidance. And, and like, 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 go back to what I said, lack of knowledge. Right. Like, you could have trademarked your pants, but yeah. lack of knowledge, knowledge exactly. prevented you from doing that. That's a fact. And, and it's, it's the same thing with, with our youth. The lack of knowledge, uh, don't, get that, don't get that tattoo on your face because you never know that rap career might not work out for exactly. you. Exactly. You might actually have to get in, in, a, in, a, in a working field and get you a gig to support your family that you exactly. might have one day. And that and that scar or that or that tat, tat. might prevent, prevent you because they already stereotyping you out the gate. Exactly. But lack of knowledge is preventing opportunities. Exactly. So exactly. so I I got a major I gotta I gotta give you a major salute for everything that you doing yeah. and everything that you continue to do. Now now people understand, if, if you don't understand by now how this man is successful, you need to rewind and rewatch everything he just said because that's what's that's what separate, that's what thin the herd. You got you got some people that's creative. Yeah. And they can do their thing, but they don't got the drive, they don't got the passion. Exactly. They 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 never had that instilled in them. They they either they always had it easy or they always had some given to them, they never had that passion. Exactly. So you got the passion and you got the talent to match it. So you kinda you kinda can't lose. It's a win-win situation. So yeah. how did you get to the point from doing like the like the, like you said you did the NBA patches and you was doing the pants and the okay. custom and the yeah. custom clothes to the point where you was like Man, I should design my own shoe. I'm glad, yeah, that's a great question. And, and, and uh, you know, I've done interviews before and people wholly, completely missed that. They just jumped to the end, you know, instead of what happened. So for me, all right, so I told you I used to be a barber. So I was a barber and then I owned my own barbershop. And then after 10 years of being a barber, I said, you know what? This ain't, I don't want to be a barber for another 10 years. Right. That's another reason why I went to the military. So 10 years. Time's up, you know. I went to the military. I got. I was like, you know what? At my, my ten year mark, I'm like, you know what? I don't really see myself doing another ten years in the military. 
in the shoe game. So it was funny. I'm looking on YouTube while I'm at the military. I'm watching. I'm seeing like these dudes customizing. And I'm starting to see it on NiceKicks.com, all these different sneaker blogs. And I'm seeing customizing is kind of popping again. So I'm looking. And I, I swear, I feel like everything happens for a reason. Like God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I was So I had recently got transferred to New York City, back home to where I'm from, in the military. So now I'm living back home, but I'm in the military. And I'm seeing how this sneaker stuff is popping again. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start... I'm gonna I'm gonna dust off the you know dust off the sewing machine and get back into this customized because I'm seeing it's Instagram it's a whole lot further people can see you yeah. and and it so, so happened that I'm back home in New York where I actually started it right and, and it's so a perfect place if you perfect start. place right and because all the fabric everything, everything plus my mentor was a shoe repair guy named Augie he the one who taught me how to use the antique sewing machine and stuff like that and I actually when I I got my apartment back in New York I got an apartment kind of close to where I grew up at. So I was able to go to Oregon, I'm like, yo, I need to get the Singer 29K machine. He's like, oh, I got one in the back for you, D. So I was able to get my machine I had. I was living in this apartment. I changed my whole room. I started living in my living room and changed my bedroom into like a sneaker workshop. So I went crazy with it though, because one thing is I'm really passionate about whatever I do. And I said, you know what, how, how am I as a new, well, they think I'm new, but I'm really the OG. Right, 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 How right. do I get back to these people to let them know, like, yo, this guy is yeah, sick with it? Yeah, cool. So what I did was, every day, I literally just made a new custom. Every day, I made a new custom. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, came up with a new idea. Boom, I made this custom. Then I did it again. The next day, hit him with the hit him with the Martin, and I'm hitting him with ideas they ain't never seen before. So I. The Fresh Prince Jordan Files came out. I said, let's do the Bad Boys. So I, instead of so I did the Bel Airs, I did the Bad Boys. So I did one Fresh Prince, and then I did the Jordan Tens with so, Martin. But 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 let, I think we skipping over an important part. Yeah. So how was you? How was you doing it though? Was you paint? Was you painting them? No. Or you, oh, was, adding, okay. or you was adding material. I was taking the shoes completely apart. You was taking them apart. Right. At that so point. so the Fresh Princes that came out at that time, right? So I bought the Fresh Princes. I took them apart and then I got pink alligator. So, cause I was like that gray. I was like that you gray. Going, so you wasn't, you was like, okay, I see everybody doing the spray the paint, paint yeah. everybody doing that. You was actually reconstructing, deconstructing yeah. the shoe and, and Put putting it back it, together. Okay, so yeah, yeah you, was a, you was a, back then you was ahead of your time. Right, so I was doing that because that's how I used to do it before. Because I was like, I can't keep up with these dudes who can paint all this graffiti stuff and art. Right, art right. Like my art is only to a limit. So you started so, to use materials. Right, to and I also started using embroidery. So like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I took his logo, I embroidered it on the back of the Jordan Five instead of the Jordan logo. It said the Fresh Prince of Bel Air with the embroidery. So I had that, and so the shoes was pink alligator on the back at the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And then I said, Nah, let's take this to another level. I remember that episode of Martin when he had pulled them Jordan Tens out because he yeah, spent that yeah, money, yeah. so he bought the Tens. <laughs> he bought the whole flight suit. So yeah, I remember yeah, them yeah. Tens. So I said, I'm gonna buy the Tens, and then I did them. I did the Tens uh, ostrich, patent leather, gray ostrich, and on the back, I used the Martin logo from the show. So I had the Fresh Prince of Bel Air Fives and the Martin Tens, and then I said it's the Bad Boys 2 pack. Oh, you a kill right now. If you, with, with them, with, so you, the way your brain work, man, it's just so fascinating to me, man. It's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's really something that I think a lot of people need to really just, just really pay attention to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To how it's more than just like, 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 you got good shoes. You got good quality. It's more than that, though. Man. It's, it's like the way your mind is it, working and, telling that and, story. and thinking. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we, we understand the drive, the passion. But you get naturally got a creative mind that's thinking. Yeah. Like, when, when, you, when, you, when you breaking down the story, you're like, okay, they did the Bel Airs. So I'm gonna do the bad boy. Yeah, like, yeah. like you naturally a, a, a creative thinker. Exactly. And it's not only that though, it's also, you know, coming up in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? And, and then always competing. With me, it was about competing. It's about, okay, that's what they're doing. How can I how can I do my own yeah, thing? You always now, wanna one up. Yeah, you wanna one up, but you wanna be original. Like now, which is sad is that you see a custom and then everybody do the same custom. Yeah. You know, everybody putting Supreme Louis Vuitton on every sneaker. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. To me, that's corny. That's yeah. not art. Like I'm an artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, and to be an artist, you're an artist to be different. Like, how are you an artist if every artist is painting the same picture? Right. Like, imagine if it was 24 Mona Lisas. Right. Like, you know, like now the thing is the sketch. 
I know you seen the thing. I think Joshua Vibes, he did the Nike Air Force Ones. Yeah, he made I them look that. like a sketching. Yeah, yeah. Now every customizer taking every shoe and making it look like a sketching. Yeah. Like that's not that's not art. Yeah. You're just reproducing exactly. somebody else's idea. So now yeah. it's like you can't even have your own. Now imagine that thing you said, yo, if you did them Will Smiths in the Mars right now, it'd be crazy. No, it'd be 10 other people doing the same exact thing. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, I'm gonna do that's the bad right. boys pack because I see he got love on it. I want to get the same love on it. It ain't the same. Okay, so at what point in time did you design your first shoe? Like, this is mine. Okay, good question. So, so this is how it happened. Like, I could have made my shoe a long time ago, but I didn't feel like like everything I do is already in my head. You know, like I was thinking about, I was like, yeah, one day I'm gonna design a shoe, but I'm not ready yet. You know, because right. I'm like, because of the, the attention to detail that I paid with customizing and then the quality, I was like, it gotta be right. It gotta be the you right can, time. You, you can see that with everything you do. Yeah. Like right from the box to the shoe, to the bags, especially in the bags. Yeah. Like you can see the the, the attention that you exactly. put into everything. So when it came down to my own shoe, I was like, you know, I wanna, I'm when I do it, I'm gonna make sure it's gonna call me. Like most of my ideas, it's weird, like I can have an idea, I'll go to sleep, and while I'm sleeping, the idea manifests in my head, and I'll wake up, and I'll be like, yo, boom, I know what I'm gonna do, and, and I set it up. So with my shoe, you know, uh, it was weird, because like, you know, everybody's into, you know, the hype beats around Yeezy and stuff like that, and I'm looking at the Yeezy Adidas, and to me, like, I'm like, yeah, them is kind of whack. Like, I'm like, if that better. wasn't, I'm like, not even if I could do it better, it's just like, Kanye was at a, when, when he was doing the stuff with Nike, he was like, yo, because I had stopped collecting sneakers. I was like, I got all the Jordans, and they still come out with the same retros, yeah, right? They, yeah, they bring so it was, I was just like, then the Yeezy One came out, and I was like, and now that's somebody from our culture. One, he's from the hood in Chicago, yeah. like, he really yeah. from the hood. Yeah. But he's also from the culture as a rapper. And in 2009, this is one thing that I really don't think people understand. Like, he had a deal, no rapper ever had a signature shoe with Nike. No rapper. Nobody, Jay Z, nobody. Yeah. Nike gave Kanye his own signature shoe, the Air Yeezy. So he got the Air Yeezy. Then a couple months later, Louis Vuitton, we talking about the biggest fashion house in the world, gave him his own shoe, the Louis Vuitton Dons and the Jaspers. That all happened within months in 2009. And that, to me, that's black history. That's and fact. That's real black history. That's like, that's fact. not, like, this is a young black man from Chicago. That's fact. Who. Not only got a deal, a, a signature shoe with Nike, but also with Louis Vuitton. See, that's the biggest of, seller. A like lot Nike, of people, a lot of people, a lot of people overlook that. A lot of people it's overlook that. But that is a major move, a major accomplishment that I feel like is not move. is not celebrated enough. It should be right. So, so then now I see the stuff with Adidas, the wave runners. I'm like, these are terrible. I'm like, if these wasn't, didn't say Yeezy, and it's only now because of how great he was with Nike, he can get away with stuff. To me, as a Kanye fan, it's just subpar. He can yeah. get away with it because it's limited, and because right. it's limited, resellers is gonna buy it. But be honest, if it didn't have that YZY on it or Kanye's name attached to it. And it was just Adidas. Would anybody want any of that stuff? Right. It would still be sick. Right. It, it so with that being said, I looked on eBay. I was like, man, I want, I need to get, I need to get them Yeezys again. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm on eBay and I'm like, okay, dead stock blinks, four thousand five hundred dollars. I'm like, oh, I'm not spending forty five hundred for some shoes. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, well, let me see if the Louis Vuitton one, Louis Vuitton was ten thousand. I was like, oh, yeah. ten thousand for some shoes. Yeah. I was like, man. Still and then crazy. that night, right? And then that night, I was like, you know what? Yo, I stopped collecting sneakers, and if it wasn't for the easy one, I wouldn't even came back into the game to even start customizing because I stopped paying attention to sneakers. When I was in the military, I wasn't thinking about sneakers right. like that. I had my collection, and I wasn't like, nothing was out there that I didn't have that made me want to keep going right, back. Right. But when those came back, it re-sparked my interest in the shoe game, which got me back into looking at blogs, which looking at blogs got me seeing that customizing his back popping. So I was like, you know what? I want to pay homage to what I think is the greatest accomplishment a rapper has done outside of rap and it's not and it's overlooked, which what Kanye did when he did the easy one I and the Dons. So I said, how can I put these two favorite things together into one shoe? You know what I'm saying? So I started designing so your it. own so your personal shoe was inspired by what Kanye had did. In two thousand and nine. In two thousand nine. Yeah. So you seeing what Kanye did inspired you yeah. to still have that, that mind of a customizer, yeah. but to take it in a way 
you gonna give it your own. Put, you gonna put your own spin on it exactly. and something that's yours. Exactly. And, and and I wanted it to be like clear as hell. I didn't want you to look at it and be like, no, he didn't. I wanted you to know. This is where I got the idea. This is exactly where it's coming from. This is me paying respect to somebody I think. I see, and you, you, think I see about, you debate people on yeah. Instagram about it. Yeah. You, you, that's one thing. You got a lot of followers. Yeah. But you'll jump in them comments real quick. Yeah. No, like, this, my inspiration came from. I'll from, tell you from, exactly from, from, where it came from. Yeah, you'll jump right Man, in them I'll comments. I'll tell you exactly where it came from. And I want you to know it came from Kanye. Mm -hmm. Because just it's like he said, a big, just like he said, Big Brother, people never get the flowers while they can still smell them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you admire somebody, you should go ahead and tell them people never get the flowers while they can still smell right. them. So I want him to know. One day, hopefully, he gets a pair. You know what I'm saying? But I want him to know, yo, because a lot of people, they like Kanye rants and he goes crazy like he's acting crazy. But no, it, a part of it is he he feels like as what he's accomplished is getting overlooked. overlooked. So as an as a, a, a artist, I could feel sometimes when he's venting because he's like, yo, I'm it's not right. getting, yeah, like, like, like with, with his fashion stuff, he's not getting respect, but and sometimes his fashion, because I went to fashion school, I know how they look at him as a fashion person. As far as his clothing, he's not setting a trend. Mm. He's copying. Mm. You know, and a lot of stuff he's doing is Raph Simmons. Mm. You know, but as far as what he did with shoes, like, and Nike to be like, nah, we're not giving you royalties. He's like, yo, look what he's doing with Adidas now. Right. Like, Adidas was number three. Under Armour was number two at that time. Right. And they was making waves. And then Adidas got Kanye, and then now Under Armour's in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're like third, fourth. They keep this sliding. They're, their stock is going. But he he knew his power to that company, and they didn't see it. It's probably like, oh, it's just a black rapper. No, he was an icon. He's the number one influencer right now. Right. So when I made my shoe, I just wanted to make sure, like, yo, the first shoe, if it wasn't for what Kanye did in 2009, I probably wouldn't even, y'all probably wouldn't even have, I wouldn't have an Instagram. Right. You know what I'm saying? So because of that, and this is my first shoe, I want to pay respect to the first person that actually got me back into collecting shoes. So what was your first shoe? What was the name of it? What did you decide to call it? The shoe now? The Valley Victorian. Valley Victorian. Yeah, VV1. Valley Victorian Volume 1. And you can almost tie that into the graduation. It, yeah, because, and college because graduation, no, it, 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 it came from that. One, See? I was yeah. one, I was an honor roll graduate, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, in the in the album, which is crazy, he goes, Good morning, look at the Valley yeah, Victorian, yeah. Yeah, yeah, scared yeah. of the future while I hop out the DeLorean. Yeah, so he gone. had that. Yeah, so it's like, Good morning, look at the Valley Victorian. Yeah. Scared of the future. I'm gonna hop out this DeLorean because I've been in the future, so you know. That's what's up, man. Like yo, yo, your whole story. I hope if anybody take anything away from this, it's not that. It's not that uh like um uh face sat down with him or uh man, he got this many followers. I hope I hope they people that watch this video, I hope they walk they they take away the inspiration and the drive that you had at an early age that translated in the older uh, as you got as you grew as a man you know what I'm right. saying? and i hope they take away the experiences and what it took for you to get here and how creative your like you got to be in this world yeah. you can't just be copycat you're not going to survive like that right like you you understood that and the fact that you were openly Give a shout out like that, cause a lot of a lot of people try to hide. It. A, a lot, of, a lot of people will be like, man, I I mess with dude, but man, you know, I I would be corny if I tell him. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people look at like you know, it's still that. Yeah, you know, they're very scared to give somebody yeah, a shout out or respect. Exactly. Like they you know all, oh, you a D rider. You That's know what, what I'm saying? saying. You get labeled as you get labeled as a D rider automatically when you when you paying respect. Right. And it, and it's, and it, and it's, and I, that's what I'm saying with my viewers. I hope that y'all walk y'all take away with something today, whether it's the drive that you gotta have to make it in this game, whether it's the 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 fact that you can't be scared to pay respect when it's due. Exactly. And um that's exactly what I'm here to do. I'm here to pay respect when it's due because I see you doing your thing and you not only doing your thing, you in my eyes you pioneering. You know what I'm saying? You not like you said, copycat I'm doing this because he doing that. Yeah. You're pioneering uh, a lane. Exactly. And hopefully, the same way somebody see you, same way Kanye inspired you, hopefully you inspired somebody else. Exactly. And you know what I'm saying? Now, and, and if anything, I hope that's what they take away from this, this, exactly. this interview that we're doing today. You know what it is? It's because, one, I'm an alpha male. 
Like, I'm not, like, a lot of these young cats or these new people, they scared of what somebody else think. I don't give a fuck what yeah, you think. That's like, exactly I can care too. I don't care. Like, you ain't going to be on my page disrespecting me. You're going to get blocked. You know what I'm saying? But I don't care what you think. Like, if I'm going to give Kanye his respect and I feel like he deserves respect for what he did, I'm going to honor that brother. You know what I'm saying? People be like, oh, they too scared to say, yo, I like what you're doing. Right. Like, like. Who does that? Right. Like but you that, care about that's that's, that's because you're a follower. Right. You know, you're the, we're in this era where people just want to follow other people. And you know, like even with the whole sneaker culture, most of the time dudes is really impressing men. Yeah. You know, they take a picture yeah. of Instagram, it's a chick, she don't even know what a zebra Yeezy is. Yeah. You you know, you got a zebra on your foot. You might meet a, a, a beautiful girl in the club and she'd be like, yo, why you got on shoes like that? She might think that is something childish to her. Right, right, right. But the, but, but, but you put on in, yeah, but you put on Instagram and you got all the dudes. Like oh you got the oh, zebra got and they and they and they and they meat hugging you but like <laughs> you 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 taking these pictures for men because a lot of women don't even really care about that right. they care about your credit straight what you got a nice car you got a nice house you you your teeth straight you take care of your take, kids yeah, that's what a real care. woman take care of. but when you be doing all of this putting these shoes up all the time like that even me like my whole thing is I'm a shoe designer right I'm a shoe customizer but. That's only 10% of who I am. I care way more about other stuff. I care more about yeah. politics than I care about shoes. Yeah, Cause I gotta I, raise my children and, and in I this know, world. And I noticed that anybody that follow your movement, anybody that follow you on Instagram, any other any other outlet that you got, they see that you that you a family man, that you care about your exactly. family. And 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 you and it's 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 easy to see that you the, the things you care about. You yeah, feel me? exactly. But I came out here specifically from Chicago to Oakland to pay my respect to you. And I appreciate because that, I want to sit down with you because what I, I want to salute you the same way you saying that you want to salute Kanye. I want to salute you because what you doing right now is pioneering. You know what I'm saying? You setting the way, you setting the trend that hopefully it might inspire somebody else that might be that might be creative don't know what to do with it exactly. that that might be that might have ideas but don't know how to how to how to make it happen or, or all all it, all it really takes is relentlessness you Honest, can't I'm a, just, and i'm gonna tell them too take. Like if you if you watching this video, you a young kid and you like yo, I'm passionate about this or passionate about that. How could I get myself out there? Honestly, believe in yourself. That's one. You got to believe in yourself. You got to be ready to sacrifice. Because like when I was telling him how I was doing the new custom every day, I was also sleeping four hours a day. And this is coming off of a 12 hour watch. So in the military, you do a, you know, I was a watch stand. So I would do 12 hours, go home for 12 hours, come back and do it again. You know, and then you get your days off. But believe in yourself. Be ready to make sacrifices and don't expect any handouts. And the last thing, most important thing that people so forget, any question you can ask me or ask him about what we do, you can also ask Google. Like right now, if I be like, oh, how could I start my own podcast? Ask Google and you're going to see so many videos, so many people who are giving you this information. How can I buy a uh, fabric? Put it on Google. Anything you could ask anybody just because you see somebody made it. And you want to ask them, yo, well, what was your way of making it? My way of making it might not be your way. You may find a shortcut. You may find a better way than what I found. But find your own way because if it's, if you really want it that bad, then it's worth it going through the trials and tribulations to get it. Fact. And what else can we say? I just want to say, man, I salute. Thank I you, honor what you're doing. Appreciate you. Shout out to my boy, FBCC. That's Face from Flight School TV. And we out. We out.